Today we're going to take apart a brush holder. Actually, a couple of brush holders. We're going to show you some of the tricks. We're going to stop the sequence from time to time along the way so that we don't waste too much of your time. But we're going to show you the key parts. The key parts are that these have to come loose. And we'll show you how that works. This one, I believe, is loose, so we'll be able to demo it really easy. It has to move like that. And these guys have to be able to move like that. And I'll show you how those pop out very easily. And then sometimes, however, with an older brush holder, these are extremely stiff, very, very difficult to get out. So in that case, what we would do is we would move it forward, push it around over the top of this and get it so that we could see the top of the pin, either there or even better, there. And the reason for that is because then we can put this thing in a vise open the vise up about that amount we can lean it against the frame and if we have to we can pound on the pin with a chisel that has a flat face and is narrow enough that will fit between the grooves so for example on here we would go on the pin right there and we'll tap on that pin except you see we're leaning against the thing here so we have to have a little pressure on it to take the, the strain off of the part so i'll clamp it on here i'll release the pressure pops the pin out hold it in place it really needs lots of hands but you can do it with two hands put the pin on there now we're going to try and drive it out it doesn't quite go out by hand but it will go out now so I hold it there like so sort of I've got pressure on it actually it's going to be about like that there we are yeah, it helps if I got a third hand. So this one's been pounded before. Now I'll drive it out like that. And this one looks like it's going to come all the way. I can release it now. And I'll tear, take a pair of pliers on there and I'll flick it out. A little pair of needle nose pliers. I'll take the pressure off it again. I'll grab hold of it here like this. Hold it. There we are, and and out it comes, and we want that. Those are very critical. And we'll do the other side. We'll release this. The pins have already been taken out of here, so we'll we'll go to the next step in a moment. But here, same thing again. This one moves. So all we need to do is get it to the point where we can drop the pin down and knock it out. Sometimes we can push it, usually not. Hold it like that. Tap it out. Grab it with the pliers. Work it out of the hole. And we got both of the pins out. Now the springs are free. And we already managed to pull the cotter pins out both sides. There was a cotter pin here and a cotter pin here. If you look at some of the other tired units, there. This is a finished one. There's a finished one. There's the cotter pin and the clamping pins. And these ones have had the spring tension already adjusted. They also have the shunts under here. The shunt that that, hold, that goes from the connector to the ground. So it makes for really good contact. That's how they need to look when they're finished. Okay, so the next step is to pull the springs out. The problem is that in, when these things are in good condition, these pins here will slide out nice and clean. But what happens is they always get seized in. These pins will not come out right now. So the only way to get them out is to spread 
these two side pieces as little as possible to be able to get the spring out. If you spread them too much, they tend to break off at the bottom right down here. We don't want to do that. So what I normally do is start at the back. Also, to make it work, these two bent over pieces will get in the way. It won't work with them the way they are because you're going to have to be able to make them move. So usually I'll put a screwdriver in here like this. I'll give it a little tap down and a tap up. Sometimes these tabs will break off, but they're not critical to the function of the brush holder. Now, next, we're going to open them up. So the way I do it is I do it sort of gradually. I get a screwdriver in next to the spring and a second one, and I use two. And that way, I disrupt it as little as possible. This one, I try to move as close to the, to the frame as possible here. And then I do the same thing on this side to a degree as little as I think I can get away with, and then I start to work it out. You'll notice that here, I already got it out of the channel. So I lift it a little bit, and here's where we start to fight with it to get it to come out. Oh, that one moved. So that one's going to come out the easy way. We're not going to have to open that one up. So what I'll do with that one, now that that's moved, I'll pull that out, if it'll come. That's what's supposed to happen. So this has come out, and the sp spring has come out. Now, this one here would have been nice if it had done that, but I don't think it would. We'll try. Because if we don't have to spread it, it's better. But I don't think it will. Oh, it's moving. Okay, that was great. So in that case, we don't have to spread them so much because we'll just basically walk them out. And that's how you put them back in as well, by the way. The same way, they go through the hole. Okay. So that's got one taken apart. Now, We'll show you a stiffer one. This was a very easy one. To put these things back square, lean against them the other way, gently. Make sure we end up with them parallel. And we drop a brush in to, a spring in to make sure that it has nice movement. This one, I'm going to open this one up just a hair. This brush holder is now ready to rebuild. So what we do is we clamp these guys back together. And that one's ready to rebuild. We can sandblast all the parts and put it back together. Okay. We found one that's frozen up. This is a more difficult one to do. The others were easy. So I open up the pins, get them out of the way. The pin has to be up so that I'll be able to work against it. And now what we have to do first is try and get these, these cotter pins out so that we can work against them. And we're also going to try and lean against it. So what I'm going to do is put the vice grip against it fairly tight, not too tight, because what I want to do is I want to shear that pin right off and hopefully move it. See that it's all frozen in there. It's not moving. So this is where it kind of gets fun. So what I'm going to do is work it against it and try and shear off the, this uh, circlet. But that's really less critical than these inside pieces. Now, the problem is that since it's frozen and these are frozen, because these are not moving, 
So this is this is one that's going to require all the tricks. So the first thing we have to be able to do is free it up to move it up a little bit. So what we do is we take a small screwdriver and we go down next to the next to the pin. to try and break the rust free. Now we got that side to move a little bit. Do the same thing here. Because they tend to they tend to get frozen up near the bottom. That one probably moves again. because we have to free that pin up before we can uh, do anything. So sometimes I hit the pin on this side as well. Anything to break it loose. Sometimes what I have to do is actually get rid of the circlip at the side to be able to free it up. But in this case, I'm going to have to do that. Okay. So, here what we'll do is we'll get rid of the circlip. And file it off. Okay. And now, take a flat file. And we'll file these ends flat so that they'll move. So we've got it filed flat. Same thing on the back. Okay, it might move down. Now what we'll do is come down the side again and, and try and open it up. it moved against the pin the uh, against the pin that'll that'll free the spring up and it'll it'll force it to move now I've got it to move from that side I'll free it up from this side as well it looks like it's probably free I'll grab hold of it again and it's moving. So now that it's moving, we can fight it up to where we can hit it. So what we have to do is pull the pin over to the side. And drive it forward so that we can see the pin. Now, what we'll do is we'll use that custom made flat file that I've flat pin that I've got and I'll knock that out by hitting it directly on the end. If it will move, great, and if not we'll have to use heat. And we'll show you that in a minute. Sometimes they'll move. We're gonna use some heat. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna hit some heat on that, but the thing is, we're gonna do both at once because that that'll save us some time and effort. So I'm gonna see if I can move this one first. If it does move, I don't I don't won't need the heat. That one I I will. This doesn't move either. So again, we'll strip off the the um, powder pins and I'm just going to cut them off with a screwdriver or a punch see nice clean cut do the same thing back here
pretty well gone. So now we can file them off, same as before. But they're almost almost flush because I basically sheared them off. So that one's flush. And this one will be flush too in a minute. You can't really see it, but I'll take my word for it. And now we'll do the same thing again. We'll open up the the frame. Need one with a fairly thin blade. There. Okay, we got in there. Again, from the outside, do the same thing. Should get it to move. moving. Again, same drill. Half of the pin is frozen in there, so we're going to have to fight it out. But to do that, we have to be able to get access to it to, to see it. So now we can see both of the pins from this end. Now, I'll try and knock it out. I'll try and break it free by just hitting it. But if two or three hits doesn't do it, we'll have to heat it up. So I like to use a vise to hold it like that so I don't have to play with it. And then I try and hit the pins and see if I can get them to move. Sometimes they will. As you can see, these are very stubborn. Is about four pounds of acetylene or less. Uh, a fair amount of oxygen. And then back off the acetylene. So I got a really, as cool a flame as I can. I haven't changed the torch head, but I just turned down the heat. Now I'm gonna wanna put the heat right on the pins. Not too much, just enough to get them warm without getting the springs too warm. It doesn't take a lot. See, they're getting kind of red there. That might be enough. Settling off, oxygen off. Okay, so we put some heat on it. And what that did is it, it caused everything to just soften up a little bit. Now the pins, although they're very stiff, they will move. So what I'm t doing is I'm taking the pressure on the vice grip so I don't bend that pin because it's warm. And I use my flat, my modified punch and I tap the thing into the pin in to drive it out. And now it's, now it's actually loose enough that it'll get out of the way. And there it's, that one's out. And we'll get this one out. Same thing. Okay. Okay. Got the pressure off it again. Put the. Got the pins all all the way driven in. So now that they've moved, we'll be able to pull them out with pliers as before. And those were frozen pins. So we unfroze them. And now 
we can pull them out. They may still be stiff, but they'll come out. Take the pressure off it. Keep my fingers off the warm bit. Now the pin's moving. Sometimes they're hard to get out. I'll just take a screwdriver, drive, go in there and drive them out. But only once it's moved. Because if you try to drive them out before they move, you'll break them off. almost out. Okay, I'm going to use a small punch. Get a 3 16 punch. And I'll drive it out with that. It's out. There it is. Unfrozen. Now take the pressure off, get the pin out. Same thing on the other side. Pressure off the spring. Drive the pin out. easier with the bigger punch but it's easier with a little punch but the problem is the little punch is not very strong Okay, that's mostly out. And there's the second one. From here on in, it's the same drill as before. But that's how you unfreeze a completely frozen one. You have to put your screwdriver, you have to free off the, the cotter pins file them flat, open up the side piece sufficiently that you can get movement. Same on this side, get the springs to move. Once the springs move, you can line the pins up to where you can get them. Try and tap them out if they won't come. Judicious heat on there with no pressure on the springs because otherwise the heat 
will cause them to distort like that. We can straighten those out, but it's better if you don't do that. And then once this is done, then you can take the pins out the same as the others so that they come out like that. Okay.